we would like to take a little bit of time to uh, uh, talk about the the question of uh, translation and its uh, connection with the the use of digital technologies or the connection with the translation and digital humanities and uh, what we would like to explore is uh, the idea of the relevance and the familiarity of uh, digital technologies and digital humanities with the, the field of translation. So we've been working, Professor Schulte and myself, for more than uh, three or four semesters developing a series of seminars on the question of translation in the digital age. Uh, both of us, we think that digital technologies can really give reality and materiality to that new form uh, of object that is closer to what describes, uh, uh, to what Bart describes uh, as, a, as a text. But I think it would be very interesting if uh, Professor Schulter should talk about the process of translation and the paradigm of uh, translation in general, and then we will, uh, as he talks, we will uh, expand and branch out to uh, to see how digital technologies can bring <coughs> something relevant to uh, to that. I think uh, Professor Dufour is absolutely correct that there have been some major changes in the way we will in the future. Uh, approach and interpret texts. From my point of view, I have chosen the paradigm of translation as a possible way to redirect not only the interpretation, but also the future of translation studies and how translation studies in the future will become a dominant feature in developing digital translation or translation in the digital age. Let me explain in very simple terms what I considered to be the essence of the paradigm of translation, which is fundamental to further develop translation in the digital age. The inherent nature of translation or the paradigm of translation is a way of establishing associations between one and the other. It is establishing a dialogue between one and the other. Therefore, in the past, we always decided to just uh, record and save something that was static. So if you have the original text, you could save the original text and also then you could save the translation of this original text in another language, which was a saving of a static situation of a text. What has come into focus now with the digital age and the digital technology is that we begin to rethink, not from here to there, but what happens in between. So if we really understand translation in that sense, that translation is neither the original source language text nor the receptor language, but what happens in between. And that in between is the process. It's a process of translation. And that now is, are we capable because of the digital technology to begin not only to think about it, to understand it, but also for the first time really to begin to record it. This will have major implications. I might add one uh, other aspect of the digital possibilities. Our age right now has made it very clear that especially our students do not particularly care to read texts. And when I use the, the word text, normally it is verbal, visual and musical texts. But we get back to this in a moment. 
So what the digital age can do is provide a form of indicating how the process of interpretation, of reading and interpretation can be intensified. So the primary function that digital technology can provide for us is indeed to revitalize the act of reading, the act of seeing, and also the act of listening. I think we no longer read, we no longer see, and we no longer hear. And the digital technology will allow us really to reassess of how we enter into the interpretation of a text in the larger context of verbal, visual, and musical. Naturally, this has major implications of how in the future we are actually going to reproduce, how we are going to save and record the process that is involved in the act of translation. It will have major implications of what the books are going to look like, <clears throat> in what form the books are being published, in what forms the e-books are going to appear, and also in what form not only the books will appear, but especially in the area of translation, of how the process of translation can be recorded. Until now, we were not able to do that. And this is where Bart comes in, it's the text and the work. It's a different way of approaching the work. It's a different way of in approaching the interpretation of works and then the reconstruction of how that process can ultimately also be recorded. And Professor Dufour has had some very, very keen insights of what the digital recording can indeed produce in terms of the reconstruction of the process rather than the juxtaposition of static forms of explanations. And I would like for him right now to talk a little more about how indeed the digital technology will be a major tool to reconstruct and record the process of the thinking that goes into the act of interpretation. So, yes, to come back on, on this question of uh, translation, I think that what is very important, and it's uh, that <coughs> is also a, a paradoxical situation, which means that a translated text does not exist without the presence of the original text. And, but what's interesting, it's neither one of these two objects. What's interesting is the relationship. What's interesting in, is the process of going from one uh, to another. <clears throat> and we can keep publishing newer versions of whatever original text. But what we want to capture and what we want to understand and what we want to represent is really is what's going on from in between, from one text to another one, and what are the many processes of interpretation that form the whole field of translation that uh, allows this passage from one text to another one. So here clearly we see that we are not looking at objects, and we see that we are looking at fluxes streams of understanding and streams of interpretation, but also streams of connection between signified and signifiers. And it's very interesting to come back to that very uh, essence of the text, which is a set of organized uh, and a series of organized uh, symbols and signs that are together uh, a form, which is a material object, which is the uh, signifier, and together signified. So, and when we are studying the process of translation, we need to also come back to that process of the formation of the meaning. 
which means the choice of one particular word to express an idea or to represent a concept. And you see that all this <coughs> series of relationship between objects have to be represented as embedded or nested within each other. So it's a whole process of uh, an, a whole set of relationship. So relationship between signified and signifiers, relationship of uh, words within uh, words inside the text, and then relationship between cultures from the one that you want to use as a source and from the one that becomes the target uh, of the translation. And clearly we see that we are not dealing anymore with anything that has some uh, fixed quality. We are dealing only with the moving uh, flux of intelligence or uh, formation of meanings. And the question is, how can we represent that? Because as soon as I record it, I stop the process. So we need to find ways to <coughs> really support some form of representation of the processes that are taking place here. <coughs> and somehow, uh, digital technologies can at one point and sometime represent these fluxes. And for that, we need also to come back down to the essence of the digital uh, objects, which are not objects. And here, to identify the same paradoxical situation that when we are looking at a digital object, we are not looking at an object anymore. We are looking at what we should call uh, a temporarily observable phenomena. Well, very simply because we could turn off the computer that is displaying the text and the text will disappear. But also it's <coughs> uh, temporary because that text, I can display it on the screen of a small portable phone or on the huge screen of a computer, and the text will change in appearance. The number of words represented together will be different. The number of pages represented will be different. So we see that here the digital object has some form of uh, plasticity that is really similar to the plasticity of the text itself, which means that for a text to really exist, there needs to be an interpretation. For a digital object to exist, there needs to be some form of interpretation, which usually a software is doing. And that process of interpretation performed by a software is what is called actualization of a text, of an image, or of different media that are presented. And what we are trying to do is to reconnect the reading of a text, which means the interpretation of a text, with the actualization of the digital object. And to understand the processes and the similarities in the processes in these two uh, activities and to connect them. So basically what we are looking at in the digital field, we are looking at possible ways of representing a text in these dynamic dimensions. A very simple example, I think, should uh, explain that. And we've been uh, working a lot on <coughs> what some sort of formalism in uh, the analysis of texts, which means that we try to remain as closely focused as possible on a text itself and looking at the interaction between the words within just one text. And here suddenly you realize that <coughs> usually a text is presented in just one dimension, which is the linear progression of the text from one word to another, one page to another. But we need to be able to understand other dimensions in the text, how the same word at the beginning of a text comes back at various moments of the same text and 
takes on several different or variations of meanings at these various moments of the text. So you see that we need one dimension of the linearity of the text plus one that is a transverse dimension that would explore uh, presence of words at different moments of the, of the text. And we need more dimensions. We need to be able to invent a space, a multidimensional space, that would allow the projection and the exploration of a text in a non-linear uh, way. But then, while doing that, which is a means of analysis, we need also to be able to think of a way of resynthesis that would use a multidimensional space to generate a new text, which would be the ideal complete process of translation using digital technologies. So, for example, some of the other dimensions that we uh, have been exploring, so one of them has been the dimension of the horizontal uh, nature of the text, which means looking at the words in <coughs> the multiple occurrences throughout the text, but also we've been exploring the images generated by the text. So we've been exploring the translation of words and sequences of words into images. We've been also exploring how words resonate together in a musical way and exploring translation of text uh, in music and uh, combining uh, all, of that, all of that in a multidimensional and also multimedia uh, environment. I think one can reduce this <coughs> and maybe explain it even further. What Professor Defourche just said is that there has been a major shift of paradigm. And the shift of the paradigm goes from our having been asked at all times, what does a text mean? And all of a sudden we are changing this of how does a text come to mean? So there is no such thing as the only definitive interpretation. There is no such thing as the only definitive translation of a text. So we are, as Professor Defour just said, we are introducing the, a different way of approaching a text. What is essential here is that in starting with a uh, verbal text that we can take a word that is, let's say, at the beginning of a verbal text, we then can go immediately, because of the digital tools, we can see how this word is coming up at different places of the text. And therefore, first of all, we are reconstructing the text on one level. Then we might take an expression or a metaphor and see how this metaphor has been carried out through the text. So we're reconstructing the text on that level. And then later on, we're bringing these, all these different levels together and reconstruct a much more complex meaning, or I should say, meanings of the text. And I reiterate here that I believe the digital technology is ultimately the way to intensify the interpretation of texts, which we have not had before. Music